Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on Point Set Topology Part 2. Today we shall start a new topic, Module 45, Partially Ordered Sets. Let us recall some basic theory of partial orders. Some of them must be already familiar to you, so we will be somewhat quick here. By a partial ordering, which is usually written as less than or equal to, on a given set X, we mean a binary relation which is reflexive, transitive and anti-symmetric unlike in the case of equivalence relation which is reflexive, transitive and symmetric. So, that is the big difference here, anti-symmetry. Anti-symmetry just means that if x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to x, then x must be equal to y. A set with a fixed partial order is called a poset. Partial order it has been you know, short one, po set. Strictly speaking, it is the ordered pair x comma less than or equal to. But as usual, you know, like topology, matrix space, we'll let x be a matrix space, let x be a topology, that's what we are seeing, right? Similarly, you will say let x be a partial order, x be a partially ordered set, let x be a poset. But then we immediately we will mention what is the uh, the partial order there whenever we are dealing with it, that is it. Okay. We also use the symbol x less than y, do not put that equality part here. If x is less than equal to y in this sense, but x is not equal to y, okay, less than equal to y will include x equal to y case also, because if x is less than equal to y, y is less than equal to x, then x is equal to y, that is what we have seen. And reflexive means just means that x is always a single to x, so that is already there. Given a subset A of a partially ordered set, this element x is called an upper bound for A if A is less than to x for all A inside A. So, you may say that x is the biggest amongst all elements of A, but x itself may not be an element of A, see. So, that is called upper bound. There are many upper bounds, right. There may not be any upper bound either. So, it is just a definition, no existence or uniqueness. It is called least upper bound if x is less than to y for all upper bounds of A, okay. For all upper bounds y, x must be less than equal to y. So, then it is called least upper bound. Note that least upper bound if it exists is unique by anti-symmetry because if x and y are both least upper bound, x is less than equal to y, y will be less than equal to x, right. So, that is anti-symmetry is used here, then least upper bound will be unique. So, then we will call it supremum of A we shall denote it by sub A. Similarly, the terms lower bound, greatest lower bound, infimum, etc. are defined. Okay. So, all these things we are using and we are used to the study of real numbers. The same definition, same, same thing. Only thing is, in real numbers, 
there will be addition subtraction multiplication nothing will be used here they are just arbitrary sets how far you can do what analysis you can do what topology you can do with just the uh, order that that is the the topic here today okay a poset is called a linear order or a total order both the terms are used if given any two elements x and y inside a we must have x is less than equal to y or y is less than equal to x or of course x equal to y is also allowed okay so you can say this law of trichotomy of course by anti symmetry if both x less than equal to y and y less than equal to x then we have x equal to y all right an element x inside x is called maximal if x is less than equal to y y inside x implies x equal to y okay so such a take any partial order set maybe you take a partial order set and take a subset of that with the induced partial order restricted partial order then you can talk about maximal element inside that so this is just like similar to you know supremum and so on maximal element here by the way in an arbitrary partial order need not be unique okay a linear order or a total order if uh, if that is there then there is a different thing so we have just maximal elements also we have defined okay a maximal element means what if anything is bigger than that it must be equal to that i mean different things i am defining the, these this definition this def total order may not have anything to do with each other a poset x is called well ordered if every non empty subset a in it is bounded below suppose you take any non empty subset which is bounded below that's not the case every non empty subset must be bounded below infimum of a exists and that infimum must be inside a okay so this is well ordered so this is a very strong condition simple example of well order is a natural number with the standard order okay given any subset of natural number there is one which is the smallest right so that property has been axiomatized here okay so natural numbers are also totally ordered right but well ordering what is well order automatically it will be totally ordered why take any two elements x and y okay that's a subset that subset must have a infimum that infimum must be inside that that means infimum is one of the elements x or y if it's x then x will be less than equal to y if it's y then y will be less than equal to x so one of the order has to be there so automatically a well order is a total order a total order may not be well order just you can take the example of all the integers okay that set may not have you know a subsets may not have an infimum which we know all right a subset a of a totally ordered set x is called an initial segment so just uh, pay attention to this an initial segment inside x if you have an x inside x such that the set a is all elements which are less than x are inside a or all elements which are less than or equal to x are inside a. so see this may not include x but it is possible that this a includes x also so there are the two different cases so both of them are called initial segments quite often this a is called an open initial segment and this part will be called a closed
closed initial segment just like the closed ray minus infinity to zero zero closed or here the closed ray minus infinity to zero zero open so th these are the standard examples okay following result is one of the most useful result from set theory and it is equivalent to axiom's choice we take it for granted what is the john's lemma so john's lemma states the following take any partial order set non empty suppose every linearly ordered subset x has an upper bound then x has a maximal element every linearly ordered subset every totally ordered subset of x means what under the same in same order we have take the subset order we have take the restricted order then take a subset take the restricted order that must be linearly ordered if such uh, linear order have an upper bound then x has a maximal element there may be many maximal elements this is just a poset if it is total order there will be only one maximal element okay x is one only a poset okay note that the lemma does not assert any uniqueness about such maximal elements it's very important using john's lemma we can easily prove zermelo's another very important theorem or in kirke is also an axiom every set x can be well ordered we have just seen the the set of uh, integers is not well ordered right with the usual order it is not so what this chermelo says is there is another order in which it will be well ordered right some existence of some order some partial order which will be total order which will be well ordered that is the meaning of this one to prove this one you can do it independently but you will have to use axiom of choice that has to be there okay there is no other independent proof as such because this statement chance lemma both of them are equivalent to axiom of choice so we are assuming this one it just means that we are assuming axiom of choice in the background but now what we will do we will prove this one we will use this one to prove this one so that way the our task will be simpler okay how do you do that in order to employ john's lemma you have to have some you know some family of ordered sets and so on then you say something is a maximal and that maximal satisfy whatever you want it so i start with a family lambda of all ordered pairs a comma some partial order where a is a subset of a look at the family px the set of subsets of x of course you don't need a empty set empty set you are throw away okay and put a well ordered on that take that one if a well order is different that will be a different element okay so it's a ordered pair of such things a is a subset and this less than or equal to is a well order on that why this lambda is non empty why is lambda is non empty because singleton sets can be given only one partial order and that partial order is automatically well ordered and they are elements of lambda therefore lambda is is non empty you start with x non empty it can be non empty okay so here i am assuming x non empty i don't worry about no empty sets here all right 
Now on lambda we will put a partial order. What is that partial order? A1 less than or equal to 1, A2 less than or equal to 2, it was related by this, I will read it as prick or I will, we can read it as precedes. A1 precedes A2, if and only if, one condition A1 may be equal to A2, along with, okay, along with what the partial orders are also same. Okay, that is the one. Or A1 is an initial segment of A2, the way we have defined the initial segment. Okay, so that is the condition. So I am expressing that in the second part. Once A1 is equal to A2, then what you should have? The order A1 and order A2 are the same when taken on A1. We take the A2 order, restrict it to A1, it must be the A1 order, which is same thing as saying xy belong to A1, xy less than or equal to 1, if and only if x is less than to y with, with the relation 2 here. Okay. Then lambda, this one is a poset. What are the things that you have to verify? What are the member? Members are look like this one. They are less than or equal to themselves because once they are equal, this that is that is okay. So reflexivity is there. Okay. Transitivity is also obvious because if A1 equal to A2, A2 equal to A3, then it's fine. But if this is an initial segment here and A2 is an initial segment in A3, then the same point will give you A1 is also initial segment in A3. Okay, reflexivity is easy. Details are left to you as an exercise. Do that one. Otherwise, all these definitions may become a bit uh, in the, you know, go in the air. So, you have to spend some time. So, do this exercise by yourself. Next, I have to show that, see, it is a partial order line. So, what, uh, what I will do with that? Take a linearly ordered subset of this lambda. So, let us gamma be a linear subset. I will show that this has an upper bound. Okay, all elements here are dominated by a member of lambda. That will satisfy. That will mean that conditions for John's lemma are satisfied. Okay. After that, we can conclude that there is a maximal element here. And that maximal element is going to give you whatever we wanted, namely a well ordered set on X. So, let us see how. So start with a linear order subset, put B equal to union of all these members inside this lambda gamma. Okay, remember a sets, what are they? All these are AI contained inside AJ or aj contained inside ai this is a total order is there linear order okay you take the union that is a subset of x now if you take any two elements in a in b there will be one a1 belonging to gamma such that both of them are will be in a1 why because x may be in say a and y may be inside some a prime, but a is less than to a prime or equal less than to a prime, one is contained in the other. Therefore, you can take the bigger one. So, there is a a1 for which both x, y's are inside a1. Now, you define the new relation on b, which is less than or equal to prime. This is new relation I am going to define. How I am going to define? x is less than equal to prime y, if and only if x is less than equal to y inside a1, because they are members of a1. Now, you have to see that this is well defined. 
does not depend upon what even i have chosen if i have chosen some a2 okay then a1 is a segment of a2 or a2 is a segment of a1 which means this relation will be the same for as far as x and y are concerned okay that's why this is well defined automatically it will be a order okay partial order okay so what we have to say that it is a totally ordered set b lambda prime is a totally ordered set okay actually you want to show that it's a well ordered total order is obvious just now we have just shown this one so this is a well order then this will be a member of this lambda and then we have to show that this is an upper bound for all the elements inside this gamma it's an upper bound for gamma so quite a bit of work to do huh yeah so we claim that b less than or equal to prime is well ordered what does that mean take any non empty subset c of b show that it has an infimum okay the moment this non empty intersection with one of the members of gamma must be non empty because what is b b is a union of all members of gamma as a subset okay so this is non empty as a subset of a1 less than equal to which is well ordered the c intersection a1 must have a infimum let us say call it as t this t is an infimum of c intersection a1 inside a1 we claim that t is the infimum for c inside b prime which is a very huge thing okay so that's what you have to show once we show that well orderedness of b comma less than equal to prime is proved okay so here is the proof take any element x inside c say x must be inside some a2 belonging to gamma right because all elements of c are all members of some b right since gamma is totally ordered this a1 is preceding a2 or a2 is preceding a1 in precedence there is one way namely a1 may be equal to a2 then obviously this t which is minimum of c intersection a1 will be less than or equal to x in the in the larger b in the in the b prime order right because they have these two are equal and x and x and uh, t are both elements of this a1 equal to a2 so we shall assume that a1 is not equal to a2 now there is two different cases either a1 it precedes a2 or a, a a2 precedes a1 suppose a1 precedes a2 okay now there are two cases again because a1 is not equal to a2 a1 may be an open ray open initial segment like this okay where this y comes from a2 all right for some y inside it now if x is less than y under this a2 then by the definition x is inside a1 t is a small is the least among us all these right therefore t is less than or equal to x okay you to begin with you have taken x to be an element of c remember that okay so moment is a1 it will be in c intersection a1 so therefore t is less than or x but this is the relation in the larger b prime also b also so t is less than prime x 
Now, second case is y is less than equal to x. Okay, this y is less than equal to x. But then t will be less than equal to y, okay, less than equal to x. So it follows that t is less than equal to x, which in terms of t is less than equal to prime x. Okay. The second case is instead of open ray, you have an closed ray. That means I start with a two, all L a one is all a two, such that a two is less than or equal to y here. The proof is exactly same. You have to just put less than or equal to here, and here you have just put less than. That's all. So identical proof. Okay. Now the second case is the other way round. A two precedes A one. Then it follows that C intersection A two is a smaller subset than C intersection A one. Right? It may be equal also. I don't care. And hence T will be less than equal to this X also, because for all these elements T is T is smallest. So T is smallest sounds smaller than this one also. But again, t is less than equal to prime x. So in all these cases, we have shown that t is less than equal to prime x for all x inside C. Okay. No restriction C intersection A one now. So this means that B is well ordered. Now we shall prove that this is an upper bound. So far, it's well ordered. It is a member of B, that a member of lambda. Okay. Now it's an upper bound for all and members of gamma. Okay. Start with a member of gamma. Then for x and y inside A one, we have x less than to y depend on if x is less than equal to y prime by the definition of this prime less than equal to prime by this this. Uh, Is the rule we have already? Therefore, one thing is clear, namely the order is fine. We have to show that this a one less than equal to one precedes b less than. That is what we have to show, right? So this condition is satisfied. Now, suppose a one is the whole of b. That is one case as a set. Then clearly. These two are equal because we have already shown this one. So, as posets also they are equal. Now, otherwise, otherwise means what? A one is a proper subset of B. That means there must be A two inside this gamma such that A one is not equal to A two but contained inside A two. If everything is contained inside A one, union will be A one which is B. So that is not that is not the case now, okay. So a one is contained inside a two but not equal. Therefore, a one less than equal to one, a two less than equal to two must be related somehow because they are in the total order is this uh, total order set gamma. Since this cannot be a subset of this one, so it is this one a one less than equal to precedes a two. Therefore. A one is an initial segment, either open or closed. Doesn't matter. It's initial segment of A two. Therefore, it is initial segment in B prime also. B also same. Y will give you the same property. All right. So we have proved that every A is an initial segment. It is uh, it, it precedes B. Okay. In either case, we have shown that. This is an upper bound for lambda, this uh, gamma, with respect to this uh, relation precedes. So far, what we have proved is that the Zorn-Slem condition for Zorn-Slem is satisfied. Therefore, there is a maximal element y comma this one in X. What is the meaning of this? This means y is a subset of x. Okay. 
and this la Lestan report 2 is at well order and if there is another y prime less than or equal to well order subset of x okay then that cannot be bigger than this one that ca y cannot precede that one this is the maximal element or y precedes then they must be equal so that is the meaning of maximal element so now we claim that this the underlying set y is the whole of x so that will complete the proof we have found a um, partial order is actually well order okay so why 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 should be equal to x that is what we have seen if not we can pick up some element x inside a complement put z equal to y disjoint union x that means one extra element okay extend the well order on y to z by declaring the only thing that we have to extend is how x is related with other elements so declare y less than x for all y inside y okay this way z becomes a partial order it is automatically well ordered because if a subset is already inside y it's well ordered if it is not it will contain x but but x is largest so there still the minimal element coming from y part y part will be again give you minimal element finally if you have just singleton x then that is singleton x itself is the minimal element therefore this is a well ordered now what we have got z is a well ordered set but y precedes that one this is a bigger thing now, that's a contradiction a contradiction because we assumed y is smaller than x it is not the full x if y is x there is no problem so that completes the proof of zermelo's zermelo's axiom here we have made it a theorem namely every set can be well ordered as i told you the original proof of zermelo Just for nineteen hundred four, more than hundred years now, hundred twenty years, huh? is directly from axiom of choice, and is certainly more complicated. The above proof is simple and short because we have directly used John's lemma and not so obvious fact that axiom of choice is equal to John's. If we try to prove. John's lemma using axiom of choice that it will be again a horrendous task. Okay, so we have avoided that one. Next time we will do another important landmark result in set theory, principle of transfinite induction. Thank you.